Suppose we are not using any kind of memory interleaving and we are not organizing the main memory to be a set of memory modules. In our main memory, we have a set of 32 words. The words are kept in successive memory locations. Usually the programs refer to successive memory locations. It can be successive instructions or the elements of the array or if we are transferring uh, data from the main memory to the cache, it will be transferred as a block that is a set of consecutive words. So here suppose there is a processor request for the first eight words, word zero to word seven. Now this unit is acting as a single memory module, hence within this module it can service only one data request at a time. So while servicing the data request for word 0, it cannot handle any other request. It should wait till the request for word 0 is completed. Suppose the data transfer for each word takes 100 nanoseconds, hence it will wait for 100 nanoseconds to complete the data transfer for word 0, then word 1 can be processed. For another 100 nanoseconds, then it should be completed, then only the next request can be serviced. So next word 2, word 3 and so on. So consider the total data transfer time. It depends upon the number of requests and the time taken for each request which is 8 into 100, 800 nanoseconds. Now if we organize the main memory to be a set of memory modules and if we are using the method of memory interleaving such that successive words are kept in successive memory modules. Then what happens here we have a request for the set of first 8 words, word 0 to word 7. Now each word is residing on a different memory module, hence we will be able to parallelly handle the data requests for each word. So this is one way of memory interleaving called low order interleaving in which the successive words are kept in successive memory modules. But here, when the processor refers to any word address, with that address it should be able to find out in which module that word resides and then it can access the word from that module. So here there is an added overhead of the module address decoder. Suppose this overhead be 2 nanoseconds and as in previous case the data transfer time is 100 nanoseconds. So for the first word, word 0, the total cycle will be 2 nanoseconds plus 100 nanoseconds for data transfer. But after 2 nanoseconds the decoder will be free hence it can start processing the next word, word 1. And after decoding word 1, it will find out that this word resides on another memory module. Hence, it can parallelly service the request for word 1 after the 2 nanoseconds. Also, after this 2 nanoseconds, the module address decoder will be free. It can start processing the next word, word 2. Also, the word 2 is residing on another memory module. Thus, it can parallelly execute the data transfer for word 2. Similarly, every word from word 0 to word 7 can be parallelly executed. So here the total data transfer time is only 2 into 8 plus 100 which is actually the number of requests into the overhead for module address decoder plus for the last request the data transfer time which is only 116 nanoseconds. And this kind of memory interleaving in which the successive words are kept in successive memory modules is called low order interleaving. Here word 0 is kept in module 0, word 1 in module 1, word 2 in module 2 and so on. Hence the lower order bits of each word address specify its module address. Here for all the four words, the lower order three bits specify the module address zero. There are eight modules, hence three bits are required for the module address. The lower order three bits is zero zero zero, which specify module zero. For these four words, the lower order three bits is zero zero one, which means module one, zero one zero, which is module two. 
Hence, in low order interleaving, whenever the processor refers to an address, the least significant bits are used to specify the module address. It will access the module and the remaining bits specify the word address within that module. So here the module address is 011 which is module 3 and the word address is word 0 within module 3. So we will access this word from the main memory. And the other way of memory interleaving is high order interleaving. Here the successive words are kept in the same memory module. Word 0, word 1, word 2 and word 3 are kept in the same module 0. Then the next four words are kept in the next module and so on. Hence here we can see for every word address the higher order 3 bits specify their module address. For all the words word 0 to word 3, the higher order 3 bits is 000, which is module 0. And for these 4 words, the higher order 3 bits is 111, which specifies module 7. Hence, this way of memory interleaving is called high order interleaving. Here, whenever the processor refers to a word address, the higher order bits are used to specify or just used to find out the module address. Here, the module address is 110, which is module 6, and the remaining least significant bits specify the word address within that module. So, this is word 1 within module 6. Word 1 within module 6 is word 25. Compared to low order interleaving, here the level of parallelism that can be achieved in high order interleaving is less. Suppose we have the data request for the successive words, word 0 to word 7. But word 0 to word 3 are residing on the same memory module. Hence, only after servicing the request for word 0, we can service the request for word 1 and then word 2 and so on. But between the memory modules we can achieve parallelism. While the data transfer for word 0 to word 3 is going on, we can simultaneously service the requests for word 4 to word 7. So here the parallelism depends upon the type of the request and how many words are kept in each memory module. Anyway, compared to low order interleaving, here the level of parallelism is less.